Hi guys. It is Thursday, February 3rd, 2022, and I'm here to do my uh, January Floss Tube update. Um, January was a really good month. I was surprised. It was a really good stitching month. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that it's January and all the new challenges are starting and there's a new year starting. And I think that had a lot to do with it, but I also made some decisions about what I was going to participate in and what I was going to drop, and I think that helped a lot, too. And also, no new starts being over. That helped. I got to start something, and that was very exciting. So I'm going to show you what I worked on and talk a little bit about my plans, and I have some stash. I haven't done a whole lot of stash shopping this month. Um, but I got a complaint from Miss Belinda at Aussie Stitcher that in my last video I talked all about all the stuff that I bought in Utah and it, it was too much to show when I didn't show, you know, very much of it. And she's like, well, I want to see it. I haven't seen it. So I'm going to show some more of it. Um, I have some more of it here. So pay attention, Belinda. This is for you. All right. So, um. January was a good month. Um, so the first thing that I did on January 1st was I started a new project. This is in my coffee bag from uh, Stitch and Button. I think Vic has a coffee bag just in just about every batch, at least one, in just about every batch of bags that she puts up. So this is what I started. This is Tomato Tomato by Hands On Design. It was an exclusive in the Homespun Needlework group. It's going to be, I think it's going to be released at market or it's going to be released sometime this year. Um, so if you don't have it, just be patient. It's, it's, it's coming. Um, so I started this on New Year's Day when I was ditching my brother's birthday. It's not a secret. They know that I didn't go. But, um, this is where I got to. I did 250 stitches and I got, um, some of the tomatoes in. So this is going to come back out this month. Um. If you watch Sammy at Sammy J Stitches, she talks about these categories that she's doing. I'm doing the same categories that she is, and this is my newest start. So this is going to come back out this month. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I worked on these are kind of in random order. Um, just in the order they're stacked here. I worked on under the evergreen. Y'all know what this looks like. It's all the toys under the Christmas tree. It's by Teresa Winsler. And I did um I did three hundred stitches on this. So here it is, and I filled in, I filled in the tree right here, and I also filled in the side of the wagon right here. I got tired of confetti, and I needed some quick stitches, and I'm like, let me find something that only has a couple colors, and this only has two or three colors in it. So that's what I did on that. Um, my goal on this for this month is I'm trying to get at least like between two and 400 stitches on it every month. So it's not a lot, but it's steady progress. Um, so that's my goal for this one. And this month I got 300. So there it is. It's fun to see the tree fill in. You can see where the garland is supposed to be. You can see where there's, there's a new ornament starting to take shape right here. There's a candy cane right there. So it's fun to watch it fill in, even though it's a pain in the butt bunch of confetti to stitch. So 
Teresa. That's Under the Evergreen by Teresa Wentzler. And this, I'll try to be more conscientious about showing the bags. Um, this is my cardinal bag from Goran's Fitchery. And uh, Goran's Hotten Bags. This, well, I'll show you this bag because I didn't show it. And I didn't have it in my in my whip parade. This is my witch bag from Karan Totten. So, um, this is Linus the Trick and the Treat by Prairie Moon. Um, which is out of paper production, I know it's very sought after. It's out of paper production. You can buy, you can pay out of printish prices for the paper chart on eBay or on, on the second hand market. Or it's available as a, it's a fairly expensive PDF, but you can buy it as a PDF on, on um, Prairie Moon's website. So this one I'm going to show you what it looks like because I haven't really shown it a whole lot. This is uh, Linus the Trick and the Treat by Prairie Moon. And I pulled this out. I had intended to do, I actually had intended to do 400 stitches on it. And because one of the categories last month was monochromatic. This is monochromatic. I'm stitching it all in black. And I did... 114 stitches on it. All I did was was this diagonal line right here. Um, and I, I, I finished, actually, I finished some of this. I did some of this. Uh, I struggled with this because of the fabric. Um, I do not like Picture This Plus fabric. Oh my gosh. Um, every time I try to stitch on one of their fabrics, I struggle. I It was okay for raspberry homecoming because it was a 28 count it's a lighter color um i struggle on his eyes on the sparrow even though it's the same fabric as raspberry homecoming because it's over one i struggle on this because it's 32 and it's a darker color and i just i cannot see the holes the process that picture this plus uses to dye their fabric i just i cannot see the holes so I only did 114 stitches on this because I can't with the fabric. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Um, I might try to get some magnification uh, and see if that helps. I was using my phone, the camera on my phone, to magnify it a little bit. But that only works in, in you know, short bits and pieces. You can't use that as a constant. So I'm not sure about this piece. I may try to find a solution for it or I might restart it. I don't know. But this month it was a struggle and I did not enjoy it. So I stopped. Look at the inside of the witch bag. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Alright. This piece is in my dog bag, also by Garan. This piece is new to my rotation this year. This is my newest, oldest whip because I finished my Victorian village. So this is now my oldest whip. And this is Retrievers by Janlin. This is an old kit. This is copyrighted in 1987. Um, And I, this was a surprise, honestly. I expected this to be my struggle bus. Um, I expected to struggle to stitch this. I expected to not enjoy it. Um, I expected to do the minimum amount of work I could do on it and put it away. But I started treating it like a full coverage because, up there, but let me show you. I'm sure you can see. But 
you know, the spot on part down here, except for up here where the dog is, dog's heads are, and the side right here where the grasses are, those, this whole bottom is full coverage. It's completely filled in right there. So I started treating it like a full coverage, and I started stitching it in 10 by 10 blocks like a full coverage. It's a little bit challenging because it's not entirely full coverage, and so I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble deciding how to proceed. But um, I ended up doing 750 stitches on this, and it was, it was enjoyable. It, it's fun to see the dogs come to life. It started looking, if you remember this from my whip parade, it, it looked like a bunch of Chinese characters, or it looked like a Chinese character. And um, I filled some of that in. Some of that has gone away. And then I just had this blob of black and gray and blue. And now, look at that. It's starting to look like a dog. You can see where he has an eye. And... Hold this up so I can show this better. This is his ear right here. And this is the other half of his face. He's kind of, it's like a three-quarter... Uh, profile. He's kind of turned. You can see he's kind of looking, facing off to the side. It's not quite a profile, but it's, he's not facing forward either. So, this top part is his ear, but this is the other half of his face, and his other eye is going to be over here somewhere. Um, so, I did 750 stitches on this, and he's starting to look like a dog. So that was fun. It was fun to put more stitches in it and start to see the dog develop. Um, and I used this, I used it for several things, but mostly I pulled it out for one of the categories last month was your oldest whip, and this was my oldest whip. And I did a lot of stitching on it. I'm sure Vicky at reading and stitching was very happy. Because every time I see her, she's like, did you water your retrievers today? Um, this, let me do this one first. This one is an old guild project. This is Renaissance by Margaret Bendig. And I've told this story, this is an old guild project for a, a Super Bowl event we used to have. I think they might still do it, but I'm not in the group anymore. Um, and I worked on this some last month. I worked on it this week. I put 500 stitches in it this week for uh, the No New Starts road trip. I got slammed with shopping stitches on road trip. Um, I had done 250 shopping stitches. And I get hit with a thousand and fifty more. And so I did five hundred of them on this. So I'm almost to the bottom of the band sampler. This is there's the screen row right here. And then there's the CC block where you you stitch the background and you leave your initials unstitched. And then there's gonna be a row of four sided stitch here. And then you can't see it in the cover picture, but there's actually another panel here of like a diamond pattern um that when you when you form the needle book it's going to be the inside of the needle book so um so i'm almost to the bottom of the band sampler and then i'm gonna have to go back and do the over one words here and future laurel will not thank me for putting that off but it'll be fine um it says my soul is fed by needle and thread so it'll be fine so I'll probably work on that somewhere later this month. Um, I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm y'all have met me, right? <laughs> I'm thinking that I might be able to finish this in April because I gotta finish the band sampler. Um, and then there's the the frame weight and the scissor fob, but I'm thinking maybe this could become an April finish. I, I, know, I know I won't finish it this month, and I don't really think that I could finish it in March, but maybe in April. And this is in my my owls from Stitch and Button, Foxes and Owls. 
They're adorable. That's kind of fun hanging on it. And I don't know why I closed this because I haven't put my stitching back in it. Um, I don't even think this thread belongs in this. Uh, sorry. And then my last piece. I did. I got all these straight threads hanging everywhere. Um. My last piece is. Here's a cover picture. The Temperature Tree by Stitch and Mommy. And I, last year, I started this in 2020. I had barely done anything on it. Um, at the end of 2020, I brought it up to 200 stitches so that I could get it in a no new start. Didn't touch it last year. At the end of last year, uh, Sammy and some other friends and I started talking about, we're going to have a piece that we're going to divide into 12 sections. If you watch Sammy's most recent Floss 2 video, she talks about this. Um, and so this is the one that I chose because, as she mentioned this in her video, she's not wrong. <laughs> because it divided itself into sections. <laughs> she's not wrong. That's why I chose it. So at the end of last year, I started working on the trunk to try to finish the trunk. I made some progress on it, didn't finish it. So in January... I I finished the trunk and I did the January branch with all of the with all of the temperatures on it. It is so pretty. I love this. It was so fun to see the see the colors and see the leaves develop. Um so I look forward to stitching on February. I think I might try to stitch the branch early in the month and then update the leaves. I don't know, update them once a week or something. Update them through the month. The problem with choosing this as my piece that I divide into 12 sections is I never finish it until the very last day of the month because, of course, I don't know the temperature until the very last day of the month. So, yeah. But this was I'm glad the trunk is done. The trunk was not fun, but the branches are fun, and watching the leaves develop are fun. It's fun. And, um, and I saw Sammy tonight, and she started her temperature butterflies, and she's blaming me for enabling her. All I did was I arranged for the chart to land in her inbox. That's all I did. I just arranged for it to appear in her inbox. Trying to help a friend, you know? All right. The last thing that I stitched on, which was actually one of the first things I stitched on at the beginning of the month, was I had a finish. This was a piece that I had started in 2020 during the political conventions. Um, I think I started at, like, the end of August. Um, and... I put it away. I didn't. I didn't put it in no new starts. So it sat there all of last year, um, because I hadn't put it in no new starts. So this year, I brought it out. I needed. Um, I needed two thousand stitches for no new starts to stitch my ride. And so I used this for part of my stitches because it was easy and it was a lot of stitches and I could do it quickly. I think I used it for my ride. I used it for something in no new starts because I needed a bunch of stitches. So this is Tulip Egg by Milko. And this was my first finish of 2022. I did 1,179 stitches on this this month. In January. 
Actually, I lied. I have one more piece that I worked on. So there's my tulip egg. This is the fifth one of these that I did. I've done. If you've been following me for a few years, you know I did the I did the the sheep, and I did the chick, and I did the bunny, and I did the daffodil, and this is a tulip. These are fun. This was another whip, and actually, this is one of the ones that did not make it in my whip parade because I couldn't find it. I found it. Um, this is American Heritage by the Sweetheart Tree. And I found this after I did my whip parade. And I've put, I've put a few stitches into it. Um, which on a piece of size, a few stitches makes a big difference. I think I've probably put 50 cross stitches or 50 or 60 cross stitches and uh, some back stitch into it, but it makes a big difference because there's not that much on this piece. Um, so I filled in the, the white stripes on the hearts um, and I filled in the blue fields on both hearts and I did the 1776. Um, and that's all I've done on this this year. But there's not that much left. There's two vertical lines. There's like a red and white vertical line here and one up here. And there's, you know, Sweetheart Tree likes to do those curly cute things all over the place. So there's some up here and some beads and backstitch the hearts. And there's curly cues on the hearts. There's a curly cue down here. And there's, there's a charm that goes in the middle right here. Um, but uh, it's not that far from being done. I'll finish it this month. I'm going to the office on Tuesday. I'll take it to the office on Tuesday. And that'll be a finish for this month. So that is what I stitched on. I I started a spreadsheet to track my stitches. Um, and because of challenges and other things that I'm doing, I've been, the road trip, the road trip is helping a lot. Um, I did almost 3,700 stitches this month, which I know for some of you is like a week or a week and a half, but, you know, last September I did 1,600. So 37 is, it's not my highest, but it's, it's pretty good for me. It's, it's, it's an improvement over a lot of months from last year. So I was happy with that. Um, the tulip egg helped a lot because I did almost 1,200 stitches on tulip egg by itself. Um, but, and I did 750 stitches on the retrievers. Um, so I was happy. I did 3,700, almost 3,700 stitches last month. Um, the road trip helped. Another thing that helped, the new start helped, is I decided not to participate in the daily 30 yearly. Um, I did, in 2020, they did the scavenger hunt, and I did that, and last year they did the zombie run, and I did that, and this year they're doing animal adventure, and when I read it, I was like, eh, I didn't really understand it, I was, I was like, what, this is confusing, and my friend Alma said, go look at the uh, examples, it's a lot easier to understand, and I went and looked at the examples, I'm like, okay, well, now I understand it, but... I don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm like, I'm tired of doing these. It was fun the two years that I did it, but I think one of the things that drug was dragging me down last year was this constantly having to work on the same three whips every month and having to put, you know, 2,000 or 2,400 stitches into the same three pieces every month. And so I'm, I've decided to let that go. I'm not doing that this year. Um, Um, so the categories that I've been doing with Sammy, that's fun. They're different every month. You can change pieces every month. I've been doing the road trip. That's been helping too because it's goals. Right now I'm a little frustrated with the road trip because, uh, I know this is going to be shocking, but I do not like to stitch in, <laughs> in multiples of a thousand <laughs> or in, not in multiples, but in sets of a thousand. Like, if I want to do a prompt, give me 200 or 300 stitches. That's fine. If you say stitch a thousand stitches on something, 
that's not my jam. So, so on road trip, I needed a thousand stitches to get from the campground to the, the needle workshop. And then I needed a thousand more stitches to get from the needle workshop to the next needle workshop. And then I need not a thousand stitches, but still a few hundred stitches. I got to roll a dice. I don't know how much it's going to be for the next event. And then I still need 1,600 stitches for my passport. And then the first thing on the next trip is of the next leg is 1,300 stitches. <laughs> I do not enjoy <laughs> stitching in sets of 1,000 stitches. So I've been working through it, but this is not my jam. I've been kind of frustrated. Um, but I've been, I've been working through it. Oh, and I got slammed with shopping stitches. That was the other thing is I have 1,050 shopping stitches. That's what I'm working on now with shopping stitches. Um, so, and I keep having to remind myself because I keep telling us it's not a race. And I keep having to remind myself I need to be more patient and I need to be less competitive. One of the things that's frustrating me is watching everybody else finish leg one and they're starting on leg two and they're getting to the first needle workshop on leg two and I'm still back here on leg one and so I need to be less competitive and I just need to focus on on getting my stitches in and not with you know what everybody else is doing so <laughs> other than that the road trip really is helping it's it's keeping me it's keeping me stitching it's keeping me you know, when I get on Zoom every night, now most nights I'm stitching on something instead of some nights I'm stitching on something and some nights I'm not. Most nights I've been working on something. All right. What else? Um, I think that's all as far as stitching progress. Plans for February. Um, I'm going to do my categories. I'm going to continue the road trip. One of my goals for February, and I'm going to use this for my passport, because the passport stitches I'll have to be on one project, is um, my goal is to finish Moon Garden. So I've been tracking my stitches, and thank you to Cheryl McKinney at Tranquil Stitches. Uh, Cheryl McKinney finished her Moon Garden last summer, and when I was watching her video, she had mentioned how many stitches were in it, was in it, um, because she tracks her stitches, and she said there were 4,315 stitches in it, and I have been tracking my stitches, so I know that I've done 2,400 stitches on it, so I have 1,900 stitches left to do on Moon Garden, and the passport will take care of 1,600 of them. 1,900 stitches in one month on one project is a big ask for me. It really is. I don't know that I'm going to make it. But, um, that's going to be my goal, and if it spills a little bit into March, I'll live with that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be mad at that, um, because I realize that 1,900 stitches in one month on one project is a big ask. On the other hand, last year, when I was trying to finish Raspberry Homecoming, and when I was trying to finish Quaker Game Board, and when I was trying to finish Victorian Village, I did at least that many stitches on all those projects. Maybe not Raspberry Homecoming. I think maybe I ended up with 14 or 1700 stitches on Raspberry Homecoming. But I think I did like 2200 or 2400 or something on Victorian Village in November when I was trying to finish it. So it's a lot, but I've done it. So it's not impossible. So that's going to be my goal for February is to finish Moon Garden. I'm going to work on my categories. My categories this month for... Um, uh, is the newest start is going to be tomato tomato for seasonal is going to be under the evergreen because it's christmas winter um for large it's going to be three things sampler because that's the only large whip that i have on my no new starts on my 22 and 22 for no new starts and um for Stitches Choice is Moon Garden. So I asked Sammy to come up with a category that Moon Garden fits into, and she was very kind to accommodate me. 
So Stitcher's Choice is going to be Moon Garden. Um, so that's the plan for February. Um, this weekend, this is Thursday night. I didn't do any stitching today. I was planning to do like 300 stitches and I didn't do anything. Um, but this weekend, my goal is to finish leg one of the road trip. I need to do 550 more shopping stitches. I need to do some sightseeing stitches, which can be anything between one and 600. So my goal is to get all that done and to finish like one of the road trip. Next week I can I can work on my passport. Um, so that's that. Let me move all this stuff over here and we will get into some haul. Belinda, pay attention. All right. Um. The stuff that I got this month, this is all stuff that I got from, this is all stuff that I got from, uh, Utah, or in previous months, it all got kind of put in a bag together, so, I, um, Valerie Parker at Live and Die LA, Valerie lives like 30 miles away from me. Um, had some discounted mill hills on her site and some other stuff that she was selling. And so I got a couple things. I, on her Facebook, I got mill hill dreidels and I got the menorah. And those of you who might be new here, the answer is no, I am not Jewish. Um, I practice Christianity. My dad was Jewish. My older brothers are Jewish. Their mother was Jewish. My my mother, my younger brother's mother, um, you know, the same lady. We have, me and my younger brother have the same mom. Uh, was not Jewish. So by most standards, my younger brother and I are not Jewish. But you know, my brothers are. My dad was, and so you know. I practice Christianity, but I stitched some Christianity. I stitched some Judaism. It works for me. I also got, um, this is, I got, also got this from Valerie. This is almost Halloween by the John Thread. So I was like, that's cute. It's sort of. It's similar in style to the Cricut Collection one. It's not quite the same style as Cricut Collection, but it's a similar idea to the Cricut Collection one. All right. Um, I got I got a thread grab bag from Trisha at Three All Threads. Um on her Facebook group. Her Facebook group is called Three All Threads Presale. And she was offering grab bags and I said, Yes please. So I'll show you what I got. These are fun. This is the second or third one of these I've ordered from her. I also ordered a grab bag from Valerie. And that was fun too. Um I hope you're going to be able to see these. So this is a limited edition from General Arts. It's like a ball color one. It's got some orange and some green and some brown. And there might be a little bit of purple in here. But it's like a, a fall color. Variegated. This is Toasted Barley from the General Arts. This is Gold Leaf from the Gentle Art. This is Baked Apple from Week's Dye Works. This is Bee's Knees from Week's Dye Works. This is my favorite. This is Santa Cruz from Week's Dye Works, and it is just beautiful. Oh. 
This is Cappuccino from Classic Color Works. And this is Holly Berry from uh, the Gentle Art. I also got This is the Caron Silk. This is Black Iris. Um, Water Lilies from the Caron Collection is purple and green. I sort of think there might be a Mirabilia that uses this color. I got two Crinix. This is 5011 number four fairy fine braid and this is 009 HL number four very fine braid. So this one is, sort of looks like a teal and it sort of looks like an emerald green. I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think it's supposed to be a green. I think it's supposed to be emerald green, but if you get it in a certain light it looks kind of teal. And this one is like a, a green and gold. And then I also got uh, two spools of Sulky, 12 weight, one in a lavender and one in a dark purple. And these would be perfect for like a long dog or an ink circles. Yes, please. So that was my grab bag from Real Threads. Here. Okay. Another thing that I got, I needed some thread. When I was stitching on my tree, I didn't have a bunch of the leaf colors. So I went to Hobby Lobby and bought some thread. And I also bought some scissors. So we have pink and they're kind of an ombre pink to blue in the handle. And these are just a. Uh, uh, I guess, I don't know if they're pewter, I don't know what color they are, but they're, they're pretty. They might be a, like a tarnished gold, I don't know, but they're pretty. I got scissors. Rich and Roxanne at r and Woodworks KY on Instagram, and I think their website is r and sell all kinds of beautiful woodworking thing or wood items for cross stitchers. They sell floss winders, they sell chart stands, they sell a variety of other things, but they started selling scissor holders. And I'm like, I need one of those. They sell them in a few different sizes that hold different numbers of scissors. And I think they actually might have some that hold different sizes of scissors. Um I'm like, I need to get me like Three of those. <laughs> I have a lot of scissors. I might have to give them some of my money. Okay, so here's some stuff. Some of it I got in Utah. Some of it I may have gotten in when I went to see Vicky last summer. Some of it just got mixed in. I don't know. I'm not sure where all of this came from. I think I think a lot of it actually came from the silver needle. When I went to see Vicky. Um, so this is Katie's Sewing Purse by uh, Julia Puncianzichi. Uh, I just thought it was pretty. And it finishes into a little needle book. She's got, got a picture on the back there. The inside. I just thought it was cute. This is Little House Needleworks, all dolled up, and it's Christmas, and it's cute, so yay. I think, I think I got this off uh, Dash and Load, because it's kind of worn, and it doesn't have a charm on it with it, so I think I got this off Dash and Load. 
this one, I know I got off stash and load. I dithered about it and I dithered about it and I dithered about it. Um, because I've been looking for it, sort of. I've been looking for its companion more. But I'm like, I kind of want this one too. But I have all these, a bunch of these that I haven't stitched. Do so I need to add another one? But then I might not find it again. I, I still kind of do want it. So, and it was, it was a decent price. So, I went ahead and got it. This is Garden Door by Dimensions. The one that I want is the Sweetheart Gate. And I haven't been able to find it at a, well, it's been difficult to find, period. Never mind the price. But, so, I got Garden Door. This, I blame on Shelia at Sunshine Stitchers. If you if you were watching Sunshine Stitches last year, you saw her stitch on this all year long. Um, and this is the sampler book by Erica Michaels. Somebody uh, was selling it on Stash and Load. They've got it all. They've got it all uh, in a. Page protectors. This I know I bought at the Silver Needle because uh, they had to go look for it for me. They have the model in the store, and the model was gorgeous. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, what is that?" And they said, "Oh, it's Teresa Coggett land that I love." And it was beautiful. So I get that. This, I blame on a floss tuber who has been very absent for the past few years. She's been dealing with rambunctious little boys. Um, Sarah Marie Shears. This is Dreaming of Daisies by Rosewood Manor. I got this as Cecilia's. This is... Wander by heart and hand. It says, not all who wander are lost. Oh, I forgot about this. But this is convenience. I think I also got this at Cecilia's. Um, this is, if you're in the Garan Facebook group or in Sunshine Stitchers, or you watch the Sunshine Stitchers, you know that they're doing a they're focusing on a designer every month. Uh, hashtag Garand Designer Focus. And the designer that they're focusing on for February is Hands On Design. And so I got that. I think I got this from Cecilia's. Um, but I'm not focusing on this one this month. I'm going to focus on my tomato tomato. So I got that. And then this one, I got at Cecilia's. And I saw it there, and I was surprised that I found it, that it was just sitting there and nobody had grabbed it. And so I grabbed it, because who knows when I may never see it again. Because these are notoriously difficult to find. Um, this is the Linen Dictionary Series by Cherry Wood Studios. EJ stitched one of these last year. So, I got that. And that is everything that I brought with me to show you on this video. So there's some more of my shopping from last year. Anyway, um, I think that's all for me. It is 11 o'clock. I was planning to do some stitching. I probably won't do that. I don't have to wait till tomorrow. Um, but I, I hope you all have a wonderful February and get a lot of stitching done and have a lot of fun. And stay safe. I know a lot of areas are having uh, <laughs> winter weather and ice and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is why I live in California. I think this is why my mother did not move out of California when she got divorced. She did not go back to Ohio. Um, because <laughs> we are having like 70 degree weather and it's wonderful. Anyway. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, I hope you all have a great stitchy month. Happy stitching, and I will see you next time. Bye.